Hello guys and welcome back to another FPL video. My name is FPL Meerkat and today I've got another video on Double Game Week 25 for you guys. And in this video I'm going to be going into chip strategy and more importantly which chip I think that you should be using in Double Game Week 25. Of course we have four different chips and each game week you can only use one of them. So it is important that we use the right chips at the right times and of course it is right before Double Game Week 25 so I'm going to go through this video and maybe highlight which chip is best for you. Uh, so I'm going to go through each chip one by one when I would think about using them if your team qualifies for that in this game week and then yeah, basically, hopefully you can make, I'm going to give my personal preference onto which one I think is the best, but obviously it's team dependent and you might prefer to use one of your other chips instead. So starting off with the wild card. Now I've got Draft Hound here, I've got a, uh, a projected lineup, I've got sort of a lineup that you could do with a wild card here. And there are a few positives to the wild card, to be honest, in this game week. You can get the doublers that you want. You could potentially, like me, have some doublers that you don't really want in your team or ones that you do pref would prefer to have for this game week. Or you might not just have many at all. Many of you might only have about one Liverpool, line, Liverpool uh, doubler. So you can use the wild card to get in as many as you want and then you can also set up for upcoming blanks and things like that. Uh, you can set up for the blank in game week 26 and the blank in game week 29 as well. We will uh, ha be having quite a few teams that blank in game week 29. We will know for certain though by game week 27 which teams they will that will blank but you can transfer in some players who definitely have a fixture in that game like uh, I've got on the bench there Regulon and Douglas Louise both will have a fixture in game week 29 uh, and Senesi is there as well because there'll be a, a double coming up for Bournemouth so you could have some Bournemouth players on the bench ready for that double in game week 28 and they have a nice fixture against Burnley in 27 as well so that'd be quite nice to have uh, and you can react to any shock news as well we might get some news near the deadline especially that man right there Mohamed Salah could be starting for Liverpool and it could be a really good way to react to any news and just have your wildcard draft ready with Salah and then just press the button and get him in because not many people are going to be owning Salah so yeah you can react to any news very quickly uh, some negatives though, you can't use it later of course, uh, there could be, there, well there will be blanks and doubles coming up later, you can't react to it as, as well with the wild card. Again, there might not, it might not be as drastic as this double coming up, but it might be nice to use later on. If you're not going to be making many changes on your wild card or many major changes that I should say. It might be worth saving for a later point and you will lose team value of any players that you transfer out. I know a lot of people have the likes of Palmer uh, gained a lot of team value in someone like him and transferring them out of course will mean that you lose that team value that's stored in him. So you'll have to buy him back for a more expensive price if you do want to get him back. So just something to keep in mind there. But the wild card I think is a fair, fairly good chip to use this game week. Then moving on to the triple captain. Of course, uh, I know many people will be wanting to use their triple captain here on the likes of Haaland, maybe De Bruyne, maybe even Salah if he's back fit. I've got Dra Draft Hound's top five here. Haaland seems to be the standout. Actually, this isn't the top five that Draft Hound have. I think this is the top five picks. That is considering if Salah isn't fit. Uh, if he is, he will certainly shoot up the rankings there. Uh, of course, you could save the triple captain as well for game week 28. Solanke has Sheffield United at home and Luton at home. Well, Bournemouth have that fixture, but I think if you're going to triple captain anyone from Bournemouth, it would be Solanke. And there's also a double coming up in, in 34 and 37 that you might want to save the chip to use. But this is a very good opportunity, I think, to use the triple captain. Uh, two home fixtures for Haaland seems absolutely amazing on paper. And again, you could go for a different City asset there or a Liverpool asset with uh, the Brentford fixture and Luton fixture. Would I go for a triple captain from Liverpool that wasn't Salah? Probably not, but it's still a very good shout on paper. We did see Jota get a 19-pointer in a game recently, so having two fixtures, if he starts both, would be amazing. If you guarantee that one of them will start both of these games, I think it's amazing on paper. The problem is this Luton fixture does come four days before Chelsea in the cup final, so there could potentially be rotation in that. 
we just can't say for certain. So it is a little bit of a risk using a triple captain on someone who isn't the likes of Salah or Haaland because you don't know for certain if they're going to play both fixtures. Foden's another one, to be honest. Foden is second there on the list. If you don't want to go for Haaland, uh, go for Foden. That's a, another alternative to it. Someone who will probably start both of those games and is relatively lower, lower owned. What I will say is just triple captain the player you think is going to score the more points. I've seen a lot of mathematics going on on Twitter about, you know, triple captaining a differential. And yes, that would be better for your rank as long as Haaland doesn't do well. If your differential does well and Haaland does well, it, it would it would it would have been the same as if you owned if you never even captained the differential. Owning the differential is differential enough for your rank. It would only be if you think they outscore Haaland. That's the only gain you'll have from it. So yeah, if you think someone's going to outscore Haaland, or if you think Haaland's going to have two off days, not just one, two off days. I mean, we did see the Champions League game and uh, I calculated De Bruyne would have come away with a 16 pointer in that game and Haaland would have blanked. So it is possible that it can happen and it could happen twice, but it is very unlikely. So yeah, I think the triple captain chip is very good and I think there's a few options there, but obviously Haaland is the standout one. Moving on to a bench boost. Now, Quite an interesting one, this, because obviously this isn't a very big double game week. You would preferably want to save your uh, bench boost for a huge double game week where you have 15 doublers. You can only have a maximum of 12 in this one. And obviously Luton and Brentford's double isn't that great. But I've added a list there of some of the great single game week fixtures we have. So some of you might have a lot of doublers in your team, but have the likes of a, an Arsenal player on the bench uh, with the fixture against Burnley, pretty good. Villa with a Fulham fixture, that's a good one as well. Bre Brighton with Sheffield. Uh, Newcastle with Bournemouth. Spurs with Wolves. There are a lot of really, really good um Good single fixtures. I've also put the predicted gain, by the way, um, on the on the bottom of the um, bottom of the screen. Sorry, I haven't brought that up before. Uh, the predicted gain is just basically what I'd estimate the amount of points or the expected points you could theoretically gain from doing something like this. But of course, it's completely team dependent. The only one that's set in stone really is the triple captain here. But this was the best bench boost team on the site that I could come up with. I don't think I'd want to bench boost with double Brentford defence, um, even though they are the highest predicted points for the, uh, the team value that you can get out of this. But if you have, for example, a bench, let's just say you have Gabriel on the bench, you have someone like Saka, and then maybe another defender, maybe a um, an Alex Moreno, a, a Stupanan, uh, a Gordon potentially on the bench. And then you have a, a goalkeeper that plays. It might not be a very good goalkeeper, but if you have a Dubravka or an Ariola on the bench, I would really consider bench boosting because we, we, you've got to think to yourself, would you want to start your players on the bench? And if you've got three of them, I reckon, I would really consider bench boosting. You'll be against the people who are triple captaining, of course. But even if you captain Haaland, that's still, you know, it's still going to be pretty good um, for his points. So, yeah, you could really definitely consider the bench boost. And, of course, it means it's out of the way and you don't have to worry about value on your bench from that point onwards. You just have to worry about maybe a first sub in case one of your players doesn't play. But, yeah, I think the bench boost is definitely a viable chip to play. And, for, and last but not least, the free hit... Uh, projected predicted gain is incredibly varied on this one just because it's so team dependent what how many changes you'd be making to your team and again this is only for one game week is the free hit you can take punts on all the doublers you might not want to keep the the Luton players especially given the given a blank uh, in the next game week and Liverpool players who are then going to blank in the next game week too uh, you can take punts on them if you don't own many of them uh, and the free hit might not be that useful later on. None of the blanks coming up are that major, apart from the one in game week 29, which we have a lot of time to prepare for. And we've already got quite a few teams that we know are going to be playing in that game. So you could potentially wildcard right before that blank and then set your team up nicely. But in my personal opinion, I don't think it matters if you don't have that many players in game week 29. I think there's about five or so, the likes of Tony, Watkins, Son, Richarlison, uh, maybe Bowen. If you've got those players, I think you're fine for game week 29. If you've got a few of those and then maybe some other players to round it, up, round it out and you've got about seven players, 
I think you're okay, and I don't think you'd need to use the free hit chip then. So you could consider using it in this game week. Uh, but like I said, you might need to prepare for the blanks. A free hit's quite good in a blank game week when you've got not many players playing. And your team might already be well set up and you want to keep a lot of the players that you've got. So the free hit, you know, you're just going to revert back to your team previously anyway. So if you're not making too many changes in the free hit's probably not that useful. So I hope that's been quite a useful rundown of what potentially chip you might want to use. So just running over my ranking, I think Triple Captain's number one for me. I think this is such a good game week for Liverpool and Man City that I think using the Triple Captain is probably the best strategy um, out of the four. Uh, Haaland, probably the number one. De Bruyne, number two. And then Salah, if he's fit, he would be potentially uh, number one or number two, honestly, if Salah was fit. Uh, but yeah, the likes of Jota as well is a fair shout and Foden. Um, you could potentially triple captain. Second, the bench boost. Again, I would only bench boost if you've got at least three solid options on the bench. If you've only got two, I probably wouldn't use it. Um, and if you've got four, then definitely use it. Uh, but yeah, I think three solid options. Like I said, if you've got an Arsenal player, a Villa player, a Brighton player, those are really good ones to have on the bench. Maybe a Porro as well you could have against Wolves. That's a nice one to include on a bench boost. Third, the wild card. If your team is just in poor shape or you've re you're have really struggling to get the likes of Salah or Haaland into your team. Obviously, if Salah is pronounced fit. Um, if you're really struggling to get them into the team and your, your team structure is all over the place, then yeah, maybe the wild card is for you. And then fourth, the free hit. I really wouldn't consider using the free hit for this game week unless your team is just in really bad shape and you would like your team for future game weeks. Maybe you've already accommodated for the blanks, but not the double. That'd probably be the only scenario where I'd use the free hit. I would probably save it for another game week. I'd probably save it for an upcoming double, just because then you can shift as many players as you want to those doubles. With only four teams doubling and two of them not looking great, I think it's quite easy just to make a couple transfers and get to quite a, quite an ideal team, as well with the amount of popular players who have a good single game week fixture. I just don't think the free hit is that viable. Uh, but, you know, I think all four, have you have a case for all four of them to be used. I think the triple captain definitely stands out at the top. But yeah. I think you could use any of these chips and, of course, whichever ones are available to you. If you're like me and you already use the free hit, then that's not even an option for you anyway. Um, but yeah, I hope you have all enjoyed this video and I hope you found it quite useful. Uh, if you've enjoyed it, please leave a like and get subscribed to the channel for more weekly content. I will have my team selection out for you guys tomorrow, hopefully, and then I'll probably do a live stream on Friday. I won't be able to do it for, I won't be able to do a deadline stream on Saturday, but I think I'll do one on Friday to react to all of the press conference news and all of that stuff. But yeah, I hope you've all enjoyed and I'll see you in the next FPL video.